All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, I figured I'd upload another tutorial. It's been a while, but I wanted to show off how I create low poly assets from the high poly assets using a multitude of programs. Now, you don't have to do this if you're pretty good with ZBrush. You can pretty much do all of this in ZBrush. Uh, but for me, I'm not really good with that program yet, nor am I really that good with Mudbox. So I had to figure out a way to kind of utilize both of them to accomplish uh, my task. So basically, as you see in before you, the three different models here. Um, right now, I'm just going to kind of take the edge faces off. And uh, this is a finished result. But as you can see, they're identical um in nature here as you can see the normal map is very very close to the detail of the high poly and it's not just the normal map that's done very well it's the fact that the low poly is matching the shape of the high poly very very closely and that is just imperative to be able to create this kind of detail and uh, the illusion of high poly on a low poly model. Otherwise, if you just had a straight block and you tried to use this detail on it, you're definitely gonna tell it's a normal map. It's not gonna look proper. So um, basically what I would do is I would take a block like this. I would then make sure that I had the proper amount of uh, polygons throughout uh, because this is gonna help me with subdivision and mud box later. And what I'd end up doing uh, in Mudbox is once I add subdivision levels, I would do it in layers just in case I had to undo any details that I uh, created. Uh, but as I added the subdivision levels, it would subdivide properly and it wouldn't cause like say, you know, polygons to be flattened or straightened out near the edges because then it's not going to look right when you're trying to sculpt so you want to make sure that you keep this in mind you want to make sure that it's evenly uh across the model so this seemed to work the best for me and if we go over to the box we'll see that you know light segments are 30 with segments are five so that works great and then i would go into mud box now I'm going to show you the obvious finished product of uh, the high poly. But basically all I did was, you know, each layer here, first layer, I added a subdivision level, second layer, another subdivision level, third layer, another subdivision level, and so on, till I got to level four. And that's when I started doing details. Now, I was just trying to do this quickly. I would obviously advise doing details on each layer and, you know, big details to about mid to small to like really fine details you know that's how i end up working with this and it seems to be doing just fine that way um so when you have that set up you basically start doing your thing and when you're done you need to export this so what you have to do and let me just show you real quick what i mean about subdivision um so if you were to select um, we don't even actually have have to select it but this would be what you do and you know hockey shifty and this will help you create more polygons so you can do a lot more detail so if this wasn't to your liking obviously do more detail uh, you need more polygons so once you're done with it you basically will go to edit select all and then under file um where is it export selection and what you'll do is export it as obj and this is so that you can bring it into zbrush later so i already have that saved so say we're in zbrush right now get past the intro screen you know hide it and what you want to do is come down here to polymesh 3d and then you want to go to import and then you would import the high poly mud box model and now what's going to happen is that when you click uh, left click and drag it's going to bring in the model now you want to go right to edit you don't want to you know do that again again this this program is a little finicky it works different than most 3d programs so you i would advise that you really watch tutorials and how to move around zoom in zoom out but you do have the options here but even so you still kind of need to know what buttons to press because this is really meant for like a stylus in a tablet. 
uh, not really for keyboard and mouse. So anyway, as you can see with the wireframe, this is my model. Now what I got to show you is what I did to basically, uh, all right, let's see. Yeah, see, sometimes it's finicky. It does weird things where you click on it and then it doesn't. Okay. So now we have this here. And what you want to do is go back to geometry and go to Z remesher. And basically down here is what's going to determine, you know, how many polygons you have on your model. Uh, I went to 0 0.5. So I'm just going to do that again to kind of show you what happened. And then I just clicked on Z remesher. And you see up at the top there, it's doing the process uh, to calculate how to best keep the shape of the high poly model, but then drop the polygon count. So as you can see here, um, this is how I was able to get the other low poly model to then bring into 3ds Max. So then you would export this as OBJ or FBX, whatever you choose to export it as. And we'll close these. And that's how I got this. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick what I did to get this baked the way I did. Now, this right here will be the texture that I bake out. Now, this is just referencing the same uh, normal map file that I'm going to overwrite. So when I drag this and put it on here later, it's going to be the one that we just baked in this video. So this is just obviously the last one I did. So I take the material next to it to kind of just give it the solid gray color. Now, if we take off edge faces, um, do that, you can see that this is all smoothed out, right? So I already set up the uh, projection. And for those of you that are not sure how this works, basically down here, uh, once you set a projection, you have to select the high poly as the target. And uh, you come down to the cage, click on cage. I also click on shaded so I can better see uh, when this cage is outside of the model itself. Now what you want to do, um, let me delete this real quick. And this one's in the proper. Yep. So you want to make sure that they're within each other in the same space. That's the whole point of the projection. So basically now this blue cage on the outside of both of them is what's going to shoot the light rays <clears throat> onto the high poly and then project that onto the low poly in the same space. So now that that's done, I already have the high poly selected. Um, you want to make sure that your render setup is done properly. We'll go over there. I like to select hammer slay. Uh, make sure this is clicked on because by default it won't be. And by default this will be max 2.5 star. You can use that if you want. Uh, I personally prefer this. Make sure that this is not on area. You want cat more ROM. And then uh, make sure that underneath this setting here, because I was doing ambient occlusion bakes earlier, um, you want to make sure that's off. Okay, so that's, that's done properly. Now we want to go to render texture. And so Delete that because again, I was doing ambient occlusion bakes. I'm going to go to a normals map. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to do a 1024, 1024. Uh, but I find that doing a higher uh, quality texture um, is better because this way you can work down to a lower resolution properly uh, for optimizational purposes. But, you know, let's say that you bake this out of low poly and then realize, oh shoot, I need it a little higher, but you don't really have time or you don't feel like making another bake. Uh, if you stretch that to a higher resolution, it's not going to look good unless you do like an upscale or an up res with like a program like Gigapixel AI. And even so, it's not going to look like the original. So it's just, you know, a good rule of thumb to keep in mind that you want to keep this texture as high as possible. So I probably, you know, aim at 4K. Uh, it's a good sweet spot. I mean, if you really want to do 8K, you can, uh, but I would go to 4K. And then this way, if you have to optimize texture down to like 2K or 1024 by 1024, you can. And it will even look sharper and a little better than if you just created the texture at that resolution. Um, you could also do techniques in Photoshop to sharpen the texture to make it look a little bit better. So 
we're just going to pick 1024 by 1024 and uh i'm going to select here and ask me if i want to overwrite the original yes and this is what i mean about the first slot in the material editor uh, it's going to reference to that so everything should be all set to render and overwrite So if any red pops up by default, that's just indicating errors. Um, you're not going to see them because I made sure the cage was properly engulfing both of the models. And, you know, again, rule of thumb is you want to keep the cage as close as possible to both, um, but also make sure that there's no part of the cage that's within the model itself. So now that that's done, um, what we can do is... Go here, take the high poly, move it out. Now you're going to see it a little bit already um, because I just baked it in. I don't know why, but it's weird. It kind of does this little error where it's kind of trying to show it, but it's not strong enough. Um, so you also want to come down here to materials and then realistic materials with maps. So this way 3ds Max will show you the normal map uh, in the bump map slot. So. I already have it set up over here properly, so I'm just gonna drag this. And I'll show you in a second how I achieve this properly. Uh, some people might do it wrong and get blue instead of you know the gray that I originally have. So if I do that, you can see that it matches. You know what I mean? This is, it's a done deal. Uh, but basically what I did, if I were to show you again how I was able to do this, I come down to bump map. Now by default it's off and it's only at 30. I like to put it to 115. Um, that's how I was able to create the almost exact details. Go under no map, click on this. And you want to go all the way down under general and you want to pick the normal bump, not the bitmap. Uh, we'll select the bitmap after this. As you see here, now the normal, now you can select bitmap. And then you would select the, um, the normal map that you have baked out. Okay, so let's say it's right here. Okay, see how it's blue? So you'd be selecting that and you would go from there. Now see, this is doing its thing because I have already, uh, um, I've already done this. So I, I don't wanna, oh. All right, let me just clear this out. So again, all right, there we go. This way it's just taking the gray uh, and it's not messing around with it in any way. But basically that's what I did for this one. Okay, so that's how I was able to create that uh, effect. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, now this is a simple model to kind of do that to. Um, you can also increase the detail of this. See, it's a little bit stronger than this one. Uh, so I'd probably drop it to about 105 under the material editor and then this way. Um, it looks as close as possible to the high poly, but keeping the shape of the model as close as possible to the original is essential. It isn't just, you know, making sure you do a proper normal map bake. It's a matter of making sure that it fits. So this way, um, with the little, you know, indents and stuff like that, the normal map works a lot better. Um, and again, if you know more about ZBrush, you can probably, you know, optimize this a lot better. Um, you could probably retopologize by hand. You don't have to do it this way, but I found that this is pretty quick. And if you know what you're doing, um, you might even be able to repair this by hand in 3ds Max or another program. So this way it doesn't have so many polygons. Uh, but again, this is sort of how you get the shape. Um, and I found that this was a good balance uh, to get the shape as close as possible to the original. But again, it all depends on what your budget is uh, for optimization, be it textures, polygons, and all that. Um, and then go from there and just try to keep to that as best as possible. So hopefully this was a tutorial that helped you out. Um, again, I haven't done a tutorial in a long time. I've also bought a new microphone, the Fifine T669. I'm still learning how to use this as well as using filters on OBS and then touching this up again in Audacity uh, using a few more filters to clean this up. So hopefully this sounds pretty good. Um, I had issues before with uh, the noise gate uh, cutting off some of my words 
uh, too soon or you know right after but hopefully we're not having issues um, if you guys like the sound of this let me know uh, I will be using this from now on and it's a pretty good microphone I'm not trying to promote it or get paid or anything but if you want to get a microphone kit with like the arm the uh, you know the little sitting stand it has um, and pretty much everything all the fixings uh, this is a good good buy for like 60 70 bucks so go on Amazon and uh, look up five fine t669 microphone and you will see what I mean so anyway thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you later